Hey, this is Mark and Chelsea here. We're two local San Diego chefs and we're here today to talk with you about the difference between the two eggs and the benefits of going the farm fresh route. So recently we had the pleasure of visiting a local chicken farm, which was not only a gorgeous day to be there, but it really brought back a lot of feelings for Mark, I'm sure. Yeah, a lot of good memories growing up in northern New York on 25 acres of land, having chicken that you know, we're just free range and just kind of doing their own thing, but really understanding and remembering the feed and the importance of that. And the quality it puts into the egg, which you then bring into the kitchen. What would be some things that you notice a difference in? Cooking with it is gonna be the yolk. You'll see a huge color difference in the yolk, and that comes from what they're eating. So what are some other things you can do with a farm fresh egg where you'd really taste the quality? You know, I think a Spanish tortilla dish would be really awesome for the simplicity of it. How there's only three, four ingredients inside of the dish. All right, so we got a fresh skillet here. You can use a cast iron or a skillet, whichever you prefer. Go ahead and add uh, enough potatoes to kind of cover it. Great, you want to make sure that the cast iron is nice and warm before you add your potatoes and onions to it. And then here we're just going to kind of pre-cook with a little bit of salt. So here what we have to do is pre-cook the potato, because otherwise the, the potato and the egg will not cook at the same time. So you want to saute lightly with oil, a little bit of potato, onion, and then go ahead and add some salt. As soon as your potato and onion are pork tender, that's when you want to add your egg to it. Go ahead and add your whipped egg. Again, local true pastured egg. And then we'll go ahead and add a little bit more salt to it. Again, you can see the color of the egg is beautiful yellow. Once you start to see a bubbler on the side, go ahead and throw it right in the oven. About eight to 10 minutes later, our Spanish tortilla is done. You see here, it's nice and light golden brown all the way on the top. Nice crunchy pieces on the side here. You want to flop it right onto your cutting board. And that's what a cast iron does. You get that perfect turnout. Yeah, it looks really good. The color, the texture. So now we'll go ahead and enjoy it. This is enough to feed probably two people. Look at those layers. It's very simple, very easy to do. So what we have the recipe here is going to be eight ounces of all-purpose flour, and then it's going to be six egg yolks and one egg whole. So the way that we're going to separate the yolks and the whites is just by cutting, the, cracking the egg in half, tearing it apart, going half and half. You can already see the color of the egg is uh, substantially more orange. So there we go, we have our six egg yolks and one whole egg. You can add a little bit of salt to this. Here we have, again, eight ounces of all-purpose flour which you can get right at the grocery store, right on the table, using just a standard fork. Your eggs unbeaten, all right in the middle. So then what you're gonna do is you're going to take your fork and just kind of do it in a spiral motion here, allowing the flour to pull into the yolk itself. It's like a little reservoir. Yeah, exactly, and it just kind of holds holds everything in so that it doesn't make a big mess on your table. And then just kind of wanting to keep the flour in that little circular motion. You can already see a vast color difference. Yeah. Once the dough comes together and kind of creates like a play doughy consistency, you go ahead and just get rid of the fork and then work it into your hand. This is called kneading pasta dough. What I'm doing is I'm just folding the flour into itself. So you want to do this uh, for probably two to three minutes until it starts to come together. If the dough's not perfectly flat and smooth, that's fine, because it will by the time you roll it out. So we're just finishing up our kneading process here. It's starting to come together really tight. It does have a nice smooth texture of it. All right, so we're gonna take the ball and go ahead and cut it directly in half, just so that way it's a little bit more easy to work with. Um, you wanna go ahead and just coat your table lightly with flour. So again, just using a little bit of all-purpose flour, just doing a light dusting. Wooden bench, uh, Wooden rolling pins are always gonna be the best to use um, just because of the weight itself. So what you wanna do when you're rolling and, and rotating 45 degrees to keep that round. It's gonna start to stick a little bit on the table. Don't be shy on the flour. So what kind of pasta are you going to make today? Today we're gonna go ahead and show you how to make hand cut tagliatelle noodle. Well, you can use it for just about anything. Um, we can go ahead and stuff it with herbs and cheese. We can go ahead and make a meat filling with pork or beef or any type of meat for that example. So it's really versatile. This sheet of pasta could take you anywhere in the evening that you wanted. 
and then we fold it into itself. Once it's folded into itself, then you're going to go ahead and just cut. What about hang drying them? How long? So if you want to eat this right away, you're going to want to let it air dry a little bit. Um, there's a tool that you can use to hang dry it, as Chelsea just mentioned, which is essentially just going to be kind of like a metal or a wooden rod T piece across from itself. And then you would just hang each piece over. However, if you don't have that, you just have a table. You can go ahead and just make a pile. Just make sure it's got a nice amount of flour on it. And then just let it sit out 30 minutes, ideal, before you go ahead and put it in water. Now we're going to talk with you a little bit about how to make a scotched egg. and the beauty of the scotch egg is that you can um, get everything at the grocery store and how versatile this dish is. A lot of people think that it's complex and difficult to make. However, um, it's fairly simple to do and I'm going to show you how. 